All right. So, just to remind you, in, in case you, you can't, you, you don't remember, um, we said um, there's this guy, the slower guy, not a whole athlete, in a suit. He runs more slowly than the sort of pole athlete. And he, let's say he runs A miles per hour. A represents his slower and we wondered, uh, if we gave him a head start, how much of a head start would it have to be so that he would finish at the same time as this, this pro athlete? So we got this other guy, he's wearing red. Oh, that This is the guy we call Hugo, and his speed is B miles per hour. And we want to give the suit guy a head start of X, so that they both get to 50 yards at the same time. All right, now, didn't really ask you to figure out the time, I just wanted you to start. Excuse the interruption, with the following um, all I ask you to do for the homework is write two equations. Okay. Um, first equation, for the slower guy, suit speed is A and his head start is X yards. Uh, write, an, write an equation for how long it will take him not, to run 50 yards. They're both going to run 50 yards. We want to see give him a, a head start of X, how long will it take him to, well, get to 50 yards, I guess. We won't actually run 50 yards. Okay. Well, it's just somebody running a certain speed for a certain amount of time goes a certain distance, right? Relationship between distance and speed and time. If you're having trouble, just think, <coughs> okay, let, let's put this in a different context. Let's say instead of uh, some guy running a miles per hour, a, uh, well, really, like, yards per second or something like that. We have to put the speed in the context of the same units as the running. But anyway, let's say we're, we're using miles per hour rather than, like, yards per second or whatever the unit of measure we're using for a. Let's say we're running, or we're, we're driving along at uh, 60 miles an hour. Like making up a different problem that's, that's similar because it uses the same kind of ideas so that we can get an idea of what we're supposed to do here. So I'm driving 60 miles per hour and I do that for one hour. Come in. Okay. Uh, so driving 60 miles an hour for one hour. How far have you gone? 60 miles. So our speed equals this, our time equals say one, and our distance equals 60 miles. I guess we could go like this. Our time is one, and so our distance is how about after two hours? 20. And after three hours? Or maybe. How about after 12 40. hours? 720. Well, how did you get 720? Well, I just did 60 multiplied by 10, <coughs> and I took 120, which was two hours to equal 12. So you use the distributive property to multiply 60 by 12. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You said, what's 60 times 12? What's an easy way to do that? 60 times 10 plus 60 times 2. He just was saying he did this. Right, that's 12, isn't it? And if we distribute 60 to 10 and 60 to 2, and they add it together, we'll have 60 times 12. So, good idea, good idea. And you got 720? Yep. 600 plus 120? 720. So you multiply the speed times the time. Right? Multiply the speed times time. Can't be passive here, you gotta be active. You gotta engage, you gotta look, you gotta 
got to talk. you got to ask. <coughs> right? And advance. Multiply speed times time. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, like this? Distance equals rate times time. So that, that always applies. If we can change the units around and stuff, but if we take the rate, multiply it by the time, and we get the distance. If we do uh, miles per hour, we multiply it by a number of hours. The hours cancel, we're left with miles. That's the distance. If we do yards per second times the number of seconds, the seconds cancel, we're left with yards as the distance. Okay, always works. Trying to apply that and write an equation that we're looking for in the suit guy. That's always true. Distance equals rate times time. What's the distance that the, the, uh, the suit guy is going to run? 50. Is he going to run 50? Mm -hmm. Oh, with a head start. With a head start. So, what will be his distance when you give him a head start? So, 50 kicks and minus x. Yes. He will run for less yards, fewer yards. You good there? You're writing this down? You got our pens out? Not just pens and paper, and you're not just waiting for class to be over? Okay, we're engaging, we expect to learn something new today. Very good. So, the distance right, equals the rate. What's his rate? Uh, his speed. What's his speed? Yeah. It's A. Yeah, that's pretty easy. What is his time? <coughs> we don't know the time. Trying to find the time. You gotta put a placeholder for the time. What's a placeholder for the time? T. So if I take his speed times his time, that will tell me. Uh, well, let's see. Once I know his head start, I'll know how many yards he's gonna run, and then I can figure out the time it takes him to run it. Or I could uh, know his speed and I can know his time. It would tell me how much of a head start he needs to have. Like, depending on what I plug in, we'll you know we'll figure all that out. Um, but let's see what the equation says. The equation says, uh, write an equation for how long it will take. What's how long it will take in this equation? T. T. Okay. When I say an equation for how long it will take, meaning time equals the rest of the stuff. So we just solve for T. How do we solve for T? Divide by A. Figuring that out in algebra one right now, that you would divide by a having letters in your equation. So that's the equation for part A. I need to know some things before I can figure out what <coughs> x or a or t is. I either need to know what t and a are to figure out x, I need to know what x and a are to figure out t, and so on and so on. But let's go on to equation. Number two. Uh, but it's going to be very similar. Right? We can set up this D equals RT. What's his distance? 50 yards. He will run the 50 yards, the full 50. What's his rate? B. His rate is B. And his time is? So it's supposed to be 5 or 50. supposed to be Times what? This time would be t because it's the same. Okay, that's a good point. That's a very important point. Remember that this t, if we're going to use t over there, it needs to be the same, right? If this is five, then this t will also be five. Is that true? Is that what we want to have? Yeah, they're going to run for the same amount of time. Yes. Yes. Yes, they are. They're both going to start at the same time and run different distances. Can we do the head start a little bit differently? Could they run for different times? Yes. They could. If we wanted to give this, the, this, the, the slower guy, the suit guy, an advantage, then whose time would be more? Suit guy. Suit guy. We give him a few more seconds to run and get ahead of Julio. How far ahead do you think he'll be at that for that extra time? Uh. X. X, yeah, we're, we're figuring out the same 
basic frame right here. But we're treating it like he's going to start at the same time, but just start farther ahead. Well, we could let the times be different, but then his head start in yards would also be the same. And his head start in yards here will, could tell us how much time, like if we wanted to look at it that way. But in this case, we are going to assume that their times are the same. We want to put the same time. We're just going to give him a head start of x yards. So he'll have to run x fewer yards. That's it, that was, well, not quite it. We wanted to solve for t, so t is 50 over b. All right, so that is it. That's all I wanted you to do. That's all I wanted you to figure out. Easy. So what do we need to know? figure out how much of a head start to give the guy in the suit. What do we need to know? Their feet, they need to know their speeds, right? And that turns out that's all we need to know, okay? <laughs> so let's save a little bit of time. Let's make some guesses as to, I'm sure some of you know what a good 50 yard time is, does anybody? Good time for running 50 yards? <coughs> for Julio? What's that? Uh, for Julio? Probably about. For good, just good. Probably well. What's good? 4.4 four four seconds. Four seconds. Yeah, good 40. Yeah. Yeah, 40 would probably be about 4 or 5. Yeah, so I'm so, saying like 50. Or two, so 50 is probably about uh, five, 5. 5 seconds? Yeah, 5, four, uh, five four, 4. So 10 yards a second. Yeah. That's I could do that. <laughs> What's that? So that is more than what I did. Yeah. Was a four so a four forty is four seconds for forty yards? Is that what yeah. yeah. Four forty, yeah, that, that a really good time is probably about so four five. Okay. So a good time for a forty is four or five. Yeah. Let's say it's amazing. It's amazing. Four. It's four. Right? Yeah. Which means that his fifty would that's easy, right? Four forty a second. Ten ten yards per second. Would be good? Yeah. Ten yards per second. Let's say that his time is or his speed ten yards. Well, you saw the video. How fast do you think he's going compared to do you think it's like five. seven yards a second or five? I think it's half. Just five, just straight half, five yards a second. You want to give him a little bit better than he runs half as fast as this other guy. Did you see Didn't the video? Didn't they were taking a break and half? Okay, well, it seems kind of sad. He was. I'm sure the guy runs slower than that. Um, so A is five yards a second. So now we have some things we can plug in. Uh, oh, this is almost too easy now. 50 divided by 10, and t equals 50 minus x divided by 5. What's that? T would equal 5. So that makes it really easy, right? It makes it 5. We know the time is five. Five what? Seconds. It takes him five seconds. Kind of, kind of reverse engineered this and then re-engineered it again to get five seconds, right? Kind of assumed his his good speed was uh, was five seconds for fifty yards. So it takes him five seconds. So it needs to take him five seconds as well, right? Good. We gel in here. Are our, are our minds melding? <coughs> Got the, 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 the Vulcan mind melt going on? Point. I wish we could. Okay. I would use it to feel your emotions. So this T is the same as this T, is that correct? Yeah. They're exactly the same. This T and this T, how do they relate to each other? In the they're scenario we're thinking about? They're equivalent. They're equivalent. Think about that. He's got a head start. This guy's coming from behind. Julio's coming from behind. And we want them to arrive here at the same time. And they start at the same time. They'll arrive here at the same time. So it will take them the same amount of time. So the amount of time it takes Julio and the amount of time that it takes suit guy is the same. OK? So since this is equivalent to t, 
and t is equivalent to 50 minus x over a, 50 minus x over 5. This is called the transitive property. If a equals b and b equals c, a equals c. It's also an example of what we call a syllogism. We solve for x. Who can help me solve for x? Nathan? Um, I already thought it out and it's 25. No, no, no thinking. No thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just solving for x. You multiply each side by 5. Good. Cancel out the denominator of 5. It's not bad to think, Nathan. I'm sure you know that. 25 equals 50 minus x, meaning his distance, right? We said he has to run x fewer yards than Julio, who runs the full 50. Well, it's going to be 25, right? Even if we're thinking, we can see it's 25. But if we're using algebra, uh, we can subtract 50. x negative x equals negative 25, so x equals 25. So what does that mean? What does this mean? That's a head start here. We're required to reach the end at the same time. Exactly. He needs a 25-yard head start. Since we made his speed half as much, that's not too surprising. Either. If his speed is half, he needs to run half the distance. Is that what you thought about? Here. Uh, I thought so. But this is, the, this is the thing that I want you to see. This is the secret behind solving a lot of these kinds of equations. I want to figure out when they'll be at the same place at the same time, or when at the same time this will cost me the same money, or those are the two ones that come to mind because then I want to set up some kind of, well, this equals t and this equals t, so they both equal each other. Or this equals d and this equals d, so they both equal each other. Or this equals x and this equals x, so they both equal each other. Let me solve it that way. And that way we eliminate the t, because we just say, that, well, the t, whatever it is, is just the same. Okay? And then we solve for the unknown that way. Um, now let's come back. The Awesome Club costs $100 to join and $10 per month after that. The Amazing Club costs only $30 to join. Join. Having a great typing day. $20 per day, or $20 per month after that, write two equations. One that gives the total cost, right? Gives the cost. That means that like equals the cost. The one variable on the other side of the equation will be standing for cost. Uh, gives the cost for the Awesome Club after X months. Since most of us didn't get the chance to do that, let's just ponder that for a second. We have the experience of the, uh, the equation writing in the previous problem. So take a couple minutes and write both of these equations, okay? Write the one for the awesome club, one for the amazing club. That right, looks good. It's very good. Um, so let's say that the first one, uh, the total cost, well, it cost me $100 to start with, and never more will I pay that $100, right? So that's just set, $100. Zero months to 100 months, it cost me $100 up front. And we'll pay more, that's $10 times every month, and all the number of months that I'm a member of the awesome club. B, 100, not 100, only 30 to join, plus, Spent more time on it, but it seemed like 90% of you had that already anyway. So, that's it. That answers the homework question. Um, 
Um, and what do you think we're, <coughs> we're wondering? A person might wonder about these two books. Justice, why do they, why do they cost the same? When do they cost the same? Why would I care when they cost the same? So you know which of the three you can deal after a certain amount of time? Yeah, if I want to join, well, if I don't want to be a member for very long, then which club would I join? Amazing. The, the yes, the second one, the Amazing Club. And if I wanted to be a, a, a lifelong member, I would join the A, the Awesome Club. Yeah. Um, but so I want to know when that break-even point is. When will it happen that it's a better deal to be a long-term member in the Awesome Club as opposed to the Amazing Club? Um, so again, what can we say about? We're trying to make them the same, right? We want them to be exactly the same. We want this value to be the same as this value. So we're saying the 100 plus 10x, it's going to give me some amount for a given x that I don't know yet. And that is also the same amount that I want to get from this guy here to maybe have it make a, a little more um, I don't know, sense. We'll do the C, little W for awesome. Uh, that's the, the letter that comes to mind. And the Z for the amazing club. Right? These, these values can be different. If I plug in pretty much any value of X, it's going to, they're going to be different. There's some, let's call it magical value of X that will make C W the same as C Z. Right? And that amount is, we'll call it C. Some perfect amount, the exact same cost. So since they're both equal to C, they're both equal to each other. <coughs> Set them equal to each other, <coughs> solve for X. Minus 30, minus 30. 70 plus 10x equals 20x minus 10x minus 10x. 70 equals 10x and x equals 7. What's that mean? After some some months here, though, or at seven months here, the same price. At exactly seven months, they are exactly the same price. And so that means that after seven months, I would want to go for it. I would, if I plan on being a member longer than seven months, I can go over the day. Say, have you ever joined a club for not very long? Yeah. Why? I uh, like a recreational soccer league. Okay, so yeah, you're not going to be a part of that club for a lifetime. Uh, it makes me think of, like, you. you join a club or follow a person or like someone on Facebook so that you can get something out of it. And then you leave that club after, or like, well, you do it most often when it's free. You can get a free trial of something for a month. You make sure to cancel it after a month, right? So that you get the free stuff, but you don't have to pay for being a member for very long. But then there are other things that you want to be a part of. You actually enjoy this membership and you are willing to pay money for it each month. So go ahead and do that. So we, we think about those things a lot when we think about our insurance payments, when we think about, um, like again, different clubs that we might be a part of. We want to know when is that break even point? So I want to join this gym or that gym or join this uh, online movie service or this other online movie service. So I want to go to Blockbuster or Netflix. Who's even heard of Blockbuster these days? Who knows what that is? You guys remember Blockbuster, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you have memories of going in and picking out a movie? Yeah. No, I did Hollywood video. Well, Hollywood video. Oh. Same experience. Yeah. You know? Your kids are not going to have that. My kids are not going to have that. Yeah, that looks. Yeah. There was, was actually still <coughs> Blockbuster in Albuquerque, but I moved back. Really? Blockbuster. I was closed down Blockbuster. It's just a sad thing because it's still like they took the letters down, but it still says Blockbuster because it's still filthy. <laughs> they never washed it. So 
we still know what's a blockbuster when I was doing this. A friend and I were talking about how our kids will just never have that. We used to uh, go to Blockbuster as kids and be like, oh, yay, Blockbuster. We get to pick out a movie. And, and uh, well, we don't know that. He was, he was talking about his kids were, uh, they saw an advertisement. They were staying in a hotel, so they didn't have their DVR. And uh, they were like, oh, cars, turn that on. Can't turn it on. We don't have the DVD, and and uh, you know we don't have. It's not on Netflix. I don't think it's on Netflix at the time. So like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it says cars. Turn on cars. So, yeah, you have to wait for it to come on. To wait for it to come on, you just turn it on. <laughs> Didn't not could not conceptualize a world where you had to wait for something to come on television so that you could watch it, which is a pretty amazing thing. Did you know that you had you used to have to wait? until Thanksgiving to watch uh, The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. What? I knew that. I didn't know that until a few months ago. <clears throat> like, not only, like, you have to wait until Sunday at I don't know what time to watch Walking Dead, but you have to wait until one time per year to watch The Wizard of Oz. You only watch it on Thanksgiving. And that was it. There were no tapes. <laughs> there was no VHS. There was definitely no DVD. And so you were waiting until Thanksgiving to watch that movie. Oh, man. Anyway, a bit of a tangent. Um, so let's put everything away, right? You know the drill. Yeah, we can. Okay, so uh, Calvin gets a head start uh, in time. Um, not in distance. They're both going to travel the same distance. Um, so then Hobbs comes downhill nine seconds later. Uh, Hobbs is going 12 miles an hour. Yeah, seven miles an hour. So um, Calvin's speed and his head start uh, write an equation for the distance he will travel in <coughs> seconds, right? We, we really have this P equals RT situation, agreed? Mm -hmm. Distance equals rate times time, okay? Uh, someone give me the distance. D, right? Oh. Very astute, very good. We don't know what it is. Okay. Yeah. Equal. What's his rate? Seven. It is seven. Uh, and what is his time? It's T oh plus. Because we're miles per hour, yeah. So what would you say? Putting his distance what? Putting his distance be subtracted by something since he got head start. Well, he got a time head start, not a distance head start. I mean, yeah, he got a, he got a distance head start. But the information given is more it's more helpful to look at it as a time head start. Right? It's both started at the top of the hill. He just gets nine more seconds, which is nine over 3,600. Why 3,600? That's how many seconds are an hour. Oh, what's it going to be? 60 times 60? We're going to take the time to do 60 times 60. Watch, I'll do it right now. 60 times 60. 36. You got it. 6 times 6 is 36, and, yeah. and you get two zeros, right? Yeah. Abby? Would it still work if you said, like, the distance minus 9, and then this 7 times t? Well, no, because distance is measured in what? Some yeah. miles or, or feet or something? Okay. Uh, and, and then the nine is measured in seconds. So to take d miles or feet or whatever and subtract nine seconds, that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. So could you have written seven miles per hour times t plus seven miles per hour times nine seconds and not convert it to nine over? What you said d equals is that you're starting there? Yeah. Seven times t t and ended that. Ended it. And then took plus plus seven miles per hour. Uh huh. Times nine seconds. Well, again, this we're 
we're talking about seven miles per hour, and we're talking about nine seconds. So you do need to convert it to hours. If I say that I traveled for seven miles per hour for nine seconds, and I do seven times nine, that'd be the same thing I would do if I traveled seven miles an hour for nine hours, right? If I did seven times nine and I'm traveling seven miles an hour, seven times nine is 63 would be the number of miles I've gone in nine hours. Does that make sense? Well, I put the units, I put miles per hour and seconds. It's like having a common denominator. So it's weird. <laughs> you have seven <coughs> miles per hour and nine seconds. You're saying because you wrote that, that changes it? Correct. Well, I see. Uh, no. um, because if I multiply seven miles per one hour times nine seconds over one, what I get is, well, what do I get here? I get uh, 63 mile seconds, right? over hours. I didn't cancel the hours, and now I picked up this weird unit of mile seconds. I don't know what a mile second is. I don't know what a mile second, <laughs> second would be, right? So we do have to convert it to hours. It's nine uh, seconds uh, per <coughs> 600. Uh, let's see, nine. It simplifies to four, one over 400. Okay. I'm gonna try to send it here. Seconds. How'd you get that at 600? That's how many seconds is it in an hour. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, seconds in an hour. Okay. So this would convert this to hours, right? So I really have seven miles per one hour times, uh, what'd you say? One over? One over 400. One over four hundred hours, one four hundredth of an hour. So now the hours units cancel each other out, and now we have an actual usable distance. Um, so this right here that could be an equation for. Uh, Calvin's distance given his time. How about for part B? What would be the equation for that given that this, then what does this T represent then? Whose time does it represent? Hobbes. Hobbes. Hobbes' time. So you took it that, I think you said T plus. Who said T plus? You said it. You said T plus nine seconds. Okay, give, got, got us there. So we're taking Hobbes' time and adding on time. We could go a different way. We could take T to mean Calvin's time, mm -hmm. and then we take time away from Hobbes' time because he has less time to complete the same task. So it just depends on your perspective. So if this says T, that's fine as long as this equation is T has T minus 9, to three, nine over 3,600 or 1 over 400. Yeah. All right, what's the equation for Hobbes? What's it should, what should it look like? T equals 12 times T. 12 times T. The, the part that I'm seeing some struggling with, and it's not just in the piecewise functions, it's just graphing lines in general. I'm seeing some, uh, we're having some difficulty. So, to start with, let's look at what it should be. And we'll get the most common way of graphing this thing, which would be to start where? Mm -hmm. One and five. 
Remember that, down five on the y-axis. Why is there a point on the y-axis? Jethro? If you plug in zero for x, y equals negative one. Yes. Two for remembering it for this long. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a curveball. Not much. Because if you put a zero in for x, you get a negative five out for y. Okay, where can we put a, another point now? Uh, go up five and over two. Up so five, that would put me here, over two. So do the rise over the run. Do the rise over the run, great. That's gonna do it, right? That is going to give me the correct graph. Let's see if we can connect these two points. That's a beautiful line. Is it? <laughs> it's okay. Um, <coughs> why is there a point at two, zero? Why didn't I, I mean, isn't there a point here as well? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't there a point here? Mm -hmm. And here? Mm -hmm. and here? Mm -hmm. and here? And here? Why didn't I find any of those points? Because they're not as easy. Not. Why is this point so easy to find? The line goes directly to that point. Okay, the slope. <coughs> yeah, that's kind of a consequence of what is really the underlying truth. Because you're just multiplying the uh, multiple of two. Yeah. A multiple of two, and that's important because the denominator is two. Yeah. So if we plug in two or four or six or eight or ten or twelve, and I can go on forever, anything that's going to cancel the denominator of two, if we plug anything like that in for x, then we cancel out the denominator and we find another point that's right on the grid, very easy to find. I could find any of these points here as well. But the next easiest one would be two more, because that would put us as an x of four. Then go five. And then we go up and another five, exactly. Ahead. One, two, three, four, five. And I hope that looks like it's at four comma five. Why? Because if I plug in four into the equation, we got four here times five over two. I figure out that is four over one, that would be helpful to me. Four cancels, we get a two there, two instead. Five times two is 10, minus five, and that gives us five, and that is the y value. Of course, using the slope is very quick and easy, but I see such common mistakes that it's such a shame we're losing credit for that, because we should understand that this line is made of what? Infinite number, infinite number of points, and each point represents input the input x and y input and output. The x and the y represent the input and output of the function. All right, any questions about that? Those two questions? One, two, one. If so, ask. If not, then uh, tally it, pass it back. If we use it, I want to see why are we making this very common mistake. It's a very common thing to do. Uh, we've got this good green. Green is good point at negative five, that's not a mistake that people commonly, you know, it's not something that people usually mess up. Sometimes I see this negative five represented on the, <coughs> on the x-axis. It shows me that you're remembering a process, put a point here, put a point there, and draw the line. Not really paying attention to what the graph represents, okay? Now, I don't exactly expect you to check your points and plug in x and figure out y, but you haven't given it a lot of thought up until this point is what that shows me. So we're going to go back and we're going to give it some more thought. Again, we, we already said, there is a point at negative 5 because if you plug in 0 for x, that would be what being on this axis represents. x is 0. Plug in 0 for x, this goes away, you get y is negative 5. There's our point at negative 5. So here's this point at 2, 5. Okay? So here's the question. Why do you think the net put the red point where she did. Yes. Um, she went up by from zero five. So she tried to use the slope, right? Yeah. But she went up five and over two, and that is, well, she went up five and over two from the origin. Good. Right? Again, remembering a process, step one, step two. And what is like, what, what has defeated Nanette? Her bad memory. She hates the memory. And then told us not to remember. Exactly. She wasn't thinking about the inputs and outputs. She 
wasn't thinking about the inputs and outputs. She wasn't thinking, when I put this and I get this out. Now, let's be realistic. How many of you, even though you may know that's the truth, how many of you graph without step one, step two, and you're not really thinking this is the input, this is the output? Like, I'm, not, I'm not thinking that. But it's, I, it's been so ingrained in me that I know why I'm following this y-intercept and this slope. I know exactly why. Because I know if I put in zero for x, I'll get negative five for y. And if you, I don't know, somehow if I, if I might ever forget that or get it mixed up, Sometimes I get, I got a lot of math up here, okay? And sometimes I get it mixed up and I say, wait, was it, is that the y intercept or the x intercept? That's not something I really ask myself. But let's say it was. It's, it's equivalent to any other question you might ask yourself about if you're remembering something correctly. Does it go on the x-axis or the y-axis? Ooh, I don't think I'm remembering this very well. Let me just double check. Does this negative five go on the x or the y? Well, I know that if I put in a certain x, I get out uh, a, a y value. Okay, so does it, go, does it go here? Okay, let me see. Well, that would mean that I plug in zero, I get out negative five. That, oh, that does work. Let me check out the x-axis. If I put in negative five into x, do I get out zero? No, I don't. I get some, some fraction that is not zero. Okay. If I ever feel myself asking me, is it like this or is it like that? Well, I better go back. because I don't remember very well. I'm not quite sure. So I better go back and Go to basics, remind myself why I learned to do that in the first place. <coughs> I can't force you, I can't just take your head and shake you and get you to do what I want, okay? But I can, I sure can encourage you to think, am I memorizing steps? And if I am, do I understand the underlying truth behind all of what I'm doing, okay? Uh, why should there be a point at two zero? There should be a point right here. Why is that? Because. Nathan for the steel. Right, if you were to plug in two, yeah, it would equate now to zero on the y-axis and two on the x. So. Yes. So we would get we would plug in two. It just so happens when we plug in that doesn't always happen, right? Our next point isn't always on the x-axis. It just so happens that our y-intercept is down five and our rise is five, so we just happen to go up to the, the y-axis. It just so happens that when I plug in two, I get five minus five, which is zero. So I do happen to get this point at two, zero. And then my line, okay, I'm just gonna steal this line. But I see that a lot. When we, we, we'll put the y-intercept correctly, and then we'll go up 5 over 2 or follow the slope or whatever from 0. Why? Think about why you're doing that. And when you think about what a graph represents, you'll think, well, that's silly. Why would I do that? It's kind of arbitrary that I would choose the origin to start from. It makes more sense that I would start from a point on the line. Um, well, that's that. That's just some notes for you. Uh, just reviewing a, a problem that I was seeing, even as I was grading the piecewise uh, stuff. <coughs> I think what we'll do now, we won't ask this question. We'll find if that works out nicely. Two different equations. If I were to graph this guy right here, what kind of shape would I get? How about this one? A curve. A straight line. So a straight line. Two straight lines. Okay, the question is where will they intersect? Where will they cross each other? Where will they 
share of paint. <coughs> Any ideas on how we would figure that out? You can make the bottom one look like the top one so you can find your intersect and slope. Okay, so we will add x, add x, negative 3y equals, mm, let's say x minus 1. If I have a negative three y equals a negative one third x plus one third, right? If I have both of those by three, by negative three, we get a negative one third slope and a y is one third. All right, take it home, Justin. What do you? What's your idea there? Oh, well, at least it makes it easier to graph, right? Yeah. Sort of. Okay, so maybe the idea, the basic idea, is let's graph these two. Who would say that that would give us some kind of idea where these two graphs intersect if we looked at the graphs? I think that might be a good idea. Uh, let's see if I can find some graph paper. If so. Now, I would submit to you, it would be easier to graph the second one just the way it looks right here. I would say it's easier to graph this guy if it's, if it's left this way. Let's graph this first one. We got a y-intercept of three. Uh, one, two, three. A slope of negative one. So down one and to the right one. I like these back because they're not in the way. But sometimes I can't see things. Okay, so there is the slope. How's that graph? Good? No. No. It's not very good. It's okay. But how much better could it really be for an hand drawn graph? Quite a bit. Could have got a ruler and stuff like that, but it's not helpful. What I'm trying to say is, yeah, we're going to find an intersection, but it may not be the best way to find it, but it could be a good guess, I would say. All right. Uh, so. Why would I say it's easier to graph this guy if it's left this way? We've graphed a lot of lines this way. So you don't have fractions. Okay, so we don't have to deal with fractions. How do we avoid dealing with fractions in this way? Justin? You don't have to add one third every time. Right. What do I do then? How would I graph it in this way? You could plug in zero for x and you could plug in zero for y. That's what I would do. Yeah. Zero for x and zero for y. <coughs> so we're going to plug in 0 for x. Uh, I plug in 0 for x. What do I get for y? Negative 3y equals negative 1. Negative 3y equals negative 1. So y equals? 1 third. 1 third. Okay. Here's 1 third. And then I plug in 0 for y. What do I get for x? One zero. Okay, so I'm asking you where they intersect is a good guess. Uh, negative 1, 3. What do you think? They intersect at negative 1, 3? Negative 2, 6. Negative 2, 6. Oh. No, sorry, 6, negative 2. Negative six, well, 6, negative 2. 6, negative 2. I do promise you these are supposed to intersect, like, right on the grid. Okay. 6, negative 2 looks like a good guess. How would I check it? Let's see if it works. If it's, a, if it's a, a point on both lines, it should make both equations true, right? That's what a point on the line represents. Okay. <coughs> 
Uh, what's another, what would be another good guess? <coughs> maybe, maybe it's more like seven negative two. Um, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's one of those. So let's try those out. Let's see if we can figure out which one is correct. And now I use a straight line tool when you notice. Yeah, it's a lot different. Like it looks like it's maybe more like what? Four. Let's move you around four. Maybe four negative one. Uh, maybe five. <coughs> four negative one definitely looks like the prime candidate. Five negative two. That's not it. Five negative two. No good. Six negative two. Doesn't Try four negative one. Because that works in both equations, what does that mean? <coughs> that that's where they intersect. That that's where they intersect. Non trivial Justin's better than that. <laughs> All right. So, you go pros and cons of graphing? Not always accurate. Not always accurate. In fact, probably always not very accurate. Because unless you have graph paper, ruler, a steady hand, and a keen eye, <laughs> probably not going to get it right on. Right? But you will get what? What's a pro? An idea. An idea. A good guess. A decent guess. Because uh, if I didn't have a graph and I was just going to throw guesses at it anyway, I wouldn't have any idea. Right? I'm just throwing guesses at it. So the graph helps me narrow it down. All right. Hold it down. But where mathematicians, mathematicians like to be very exact, there's got to be a better way. Right? It's got to be an exact way. To find it exactly right the first time. Agreed? Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. Let me just make a copy of this page. get a more exact way. Mm -hmm. Let's start with actually, let's just go back to where Jethro took us to this here. Let's maybe make this a little. So we have two equations. Um, this one and this one. All right, so think about the intersection point of the graph. Okay, we're taking that, ex that, that uh, specific example of like the two runners, Calvin and Hobbes, um, the Awesome Club and the Amazing Club, right? Two equations and two variables. Two equations and two variables. Uh, if we find where they intersect, what will we have found? We'll find a point, right? A point that's on both lines, both graphs. This works for any graph, even curves and stuff. Okay? And we'll find that point. That point will be on both lines, which means what? If that point is on both graphs, what does that mean? <coughs> the graphs made a point. Points all represent. Oh, right. 
That's where they that's where they intersect. What does it mean about the because the graph really is just a tool for understanding the equation, right? They all have the same if you put in one input you'll get the same output. Yes. Graph. Or exactly the same thing, just a little bit different, like we put in the input and the output at the same time, it comes out to be true. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, can can this function give different outputs than this one? Yeah. For the same x? Yeah, it can. It does it uh, almost all the time. Except for one specific time. There's one particular value of x that gives the same value of y. Right? There's some point out there where the same x gives the same y in both of these functions. And we take this x and we put it here, and put it there, and put this y here, and put this y there. Both the equations will be true. So I say all that to say that this y and this y are the same. So this thing equals y, so does this thing, right? So we use that transitive property. If they both equal y, then they most both equal each other. Right? We're, we're, we're saying that Whatever comes out of this function is this, and the same thing will come out of this function. And also the x needs to be the same, so we just solve to find that x, that x that gives the exact same y. So we'll just cut out the middleman here and solve for x. What do you think we'll get when we solve for x? <coughs> Given we've already done this problem. Four. We'll get four. We should get four. Let's see. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do like a tricky thing. And then multiple, multiply both sides by 3. Does anybody see why I would do that? <coughs> so if you multiply each side by 3, you will destroy the x on the one side. Destroy it? Destroy it. Destroy it. Won't it still do that? It would take away no, the denominators. The denominators will get canceled. Meaning it won't destroy the x, it'll be a negative 1, one to x. Yeah, okay. So we'll multiply by 3, multiply by 3. Negative 3x plus 9 equals negative what when I distribute the 3? <coughs> negative 1x. <coughs> 3 times 1 third plus 1. That's much easier to solve. I don't have to deal with fractions anymore. Okay, so I'll add 3x, add 3x, minus 1, minus 1. 8 equals 2x. Big surprise, x is 4. Pretend I, I haven't done the graph. How do I figure out what the y value is? Plug x in one of the. Yeah, but which one? Either, Either one. Because x and y are supposed to be exactly the same. In fact, a good check to see that I've done my work correctly is plug 4 in there and so there, make sure that I get the same thing. But if I have the same measure, uh, then you did something wrong. Yeah, something went wrong. Probably somewhere in here. Right? So if we want to find. Uh, when the Awesome Club and the Amazing Club will cost the same, then we can make it so that both equations equal C, and then set both of those equations now equal to each other, those expressions equal to each other, and solve for x where it represents time. If we want to know where two graphs intersect, we can solve them both for y or x, it doesn't matter, but we're used to solving for y. Then now that they're both equal to y, we set them equal to each other and solve for x. Five minutes. You can definitely handle. I'll give you one that works out. Three okay. x minus y equals two. Six x plus three y equals thirteen. Where will those graphs intersect? Naturally, we could graph both of these. It wouldn't be too hard to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y in both of these. OK, so 0 for x here. Maybe I'll color code them. This one red. I'm going to tell the difference. OK, put in a, a 0 for x, and I get y is negative 2. Put in 0 for y, I get x is uh, 
um, two thirds, and I can graph both of those. Um, X is two thirds, zero, zero negative two. x, I get out y is 14 over 3, and then 0 for y gives me that x is 14 over 6, 7 over 3. So 0 comma 14 thirds, that's, uh, <coughs> that's 3, 6, 12, uh, 18, 12. 14 thirds, uh, and then 7 thirds, 0, 6, 7 thirds, 0. And it looks like they cross it like, I don't know, 1 and a half comma 2, maybe. Maybe. Right? Kind of making the point here that graphs are not great. Or instead, what could we do? Set them equal to each other. Now, how do I do that? Well, if we put in points now, we're now we're replacing x and y. We want to solve for x and y. So we want to, in this equation, either get y by itself or x, and then do the same here. Okay. So in this case, uh, y equals three x minus two. And here, y equals negative 2x plus 14 over 3. I want the same x and y for both. If these are the same, I can set these equal to each other and solve for x. Y. Okay? Have a good day. Guys.